am I being unfair with the constellation? Am I kind of overstating it? Am I being dramatic? You know, is this my dramatis personae? When I, you know, rag on the constellation, am I going too far? And the truth of it is, I figured there's one way to figure it out. Take a constellation out for a spin. Now, we are using the Aquila. Some people may say, oh, no, 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 you got to use the Andromeda. But we'll get to that in a minute. But basically, we're going to take the Aquila and we are going to fit this thing out. So in total, we've spent 362000 worth on, on this ship's fitting. We've upgraded the power cores. We've upgraded the coolers. We've upgraded the quantum drive. We've upgraded the web. Well, actually, technically, I don't think I counted the weapons because I borrowed the weapons off of the hammerhead. And they're the uh, size four repeaters off of one of the hammerhead's turrets. So we've saved a little money there. But, you know, ballpark, you're looking at a fair chunk of change to get this ship up to what it should be. You know kind of more or less out of the box and this is kind of a frequent mistake that a lot of people make with you know ships and star citizen is the out of the box version of the ship you know the i just bought it off the website i log into the game if you're lucky enough to have your ship finished already if you've got a flight ready ship and i'm playing it and it's bad out of the box, most ships are mediocre to horrible, and the Constellation is certainly no exception. If you buy a Connie Aquila and you expect it to perform the way that it's performing for me in this video, no, not even close, not even remotely close. We're talking coolers, power cord, I mean, you got to do it all. Now, I was lucky enough that I had some of the parts, you know, I, I think I even pulled the uh, power cores off of my retaliator for this build. Because, you know, when you when you got five crime stat, there's not a lot of places that are overly welcoming to you, no matter how much money you plan to spend. Getting to this point with this ship, you go, OK, this ship actually performs semi decently. Now, of course, we're starting off with some of the, the easier missions that Vaughn gives us. We're doing the 12,500 credits or whatever. So a lot of our targets are prospectors and auroras, you know. And <laughs> I mean, realistically, if the Connie couldn't handle these, you, you know, that would be just, I mean, that would be the point where even CIG would have to say, no, page one rewrite this thing is crap but you know it it does all right against targets that really are that it just totally outclasses but you could say that about a lot of ships right it's when you get to the meteor opponents that's when you start having to kind of go like okay this is really is this ship going to shine now some people might have some negative things to say about the Connie because of the way that it handled in the past. And it's true. The handling of the ship in the past was horrible. You know, I, I compared it to trying to help a, a belligerent drunk girl down a flight of stairs. It's just like, it's a disaster waiting to happen. But the truth of it is, is that they have fixed that. They have largely fixed that. And the handling on the Constellation is for a ship of its size and its weight surprisingly crisp it's actually pretty damn good so you're thinking like wait i thought you hated the connie we'll get to that but first you know i wanted to take it up against potentially tougher opponents unfortunately the game was kind of throwing me some curveballs because a lot of these you know, that next tier of opponents, it, it was really lowballing me. I mean, it was just lining up Cutlass Black after Cutlass Black after Cutlass Black. And realistically, you know, an NPC Cutlass Black is... <laughs> 
not really all that daunting of an opponent if you've done any PvE in the game whatsoever. You know that these things tend to just evaporate. Though one thing I do kind of want to know, and you'll see this as um, we're doing these kind of little combat situations here, is that most of these display panels, including the ones in the center, they all work, but yet they're all transparent too. So even though people like to make fun of this interface, I'm actually, this cockpit, if we could just minimize the struts in this cockpit, this cockpit would actually be pretty damn good. If you could just, if someone could just go in and just kind of minimize these struts, especially these ones in the middle that are really thick, the vertical ones, just knock those back a little bit. And that little area where they meet in the middle, right in the middle of the screen, just put a vertical strut, you know, right where the, uh, you know, where the two beams are coming down. The ones that we were saying were too thick in the beginning. If we could put like a little vertical you know, and, and get rid of those two horizontals in the middle, it, it would actually be pretty damn decent because you've got downward visibility. You've got upward visibility to a degree. This is actually a fairly good co you know, cockpit. And compared to like the pilot station in a, in a cutlass black, this is actually pretty damned good. This is pretty damned good. You're saying, okay, this is getting a little weird because you're being oddly positive about this ship. And I was like, I thought you hated it. We'll get there in a second. Realistically, for what it's supposed to be, it's, you know, we are flying around in the exploration version after all. We're not in the gunship, you know, the medium freight slash gunship, which is the Andromeda. And when you get to the Andromeda, you kind of step things up a notch, right? Because if you pay attention, you go and you look at the stats on it, it's like, oh, wait, I can put two fixed size fives and two gimbaled size fours on the Andromeda? Well, hello. That's actually pretty damn decent. And you know, when you kind of take these guns off of auto gimbal, you got some pretty decent reach with these guns. So I could have like, I could have two distortions on gimbals and I could have two fixed size fives for, you know, doing damage. I could really mix it up. I would argue that, you know, kind of when you're stepping up to the Andromeda, that really is where the problem really starts to kind of come into play. The Constellation is a very old ship. I mean, realistically, we're closing in on what? Like the first time we saw the Constellation, just the concept of the Constellation was probably back in 2012, 2013. So this ship in one form or another has been around for pretty much a decade. And I mean, I think that, unfortunately, the problem with the Constellation is is that how CIG thought the game was going to play out you know, almost a decade ago is really not how it plays out now. And that really is kind of where the problem lies. Like, even if you could go double fix, you know, like, or four fixed size five guns on this, it's still not really all that good when you think about its primary competition. The Corsair isn't just the primary competition of the Constellation. The Corsair represents the next generation of ships. It represents, you know, learning from the mistakes of the past. And when you look at the firepower on the Corsair, when you're talking about four, six, fives, four fixed size fives and two fixed size fours, all forward facing, that is an awful lot of firepower. That is a pretty serious step up in terms of overall hitting power. And when you think about it, like you, some people will immediately go into, well, if I was fighting against this, and I would be using the missiles too and blah, blah, blah. But the thing of it is, is like you're a player out in the universe. You're out here doing what I'm doing right now. You're fighting ships, you're fighting NPCs. 
what sh which ship would you prefer? Now, realistically, think about the combat situations that you get into a lot of the time. They resolve, when you're, especially when you're fighting NPCs, they resolve pretty quickly. And against other players, sometimes getting in that big, heavy alpha strike, that big first hit, makes all the difference in a fight. Being able to go and deliver a heavy duty, you know, really hard hitting alpha can, I mean, it really can kind of change the world. It can, it can really define the engagement in ways that, you know, that a lot of people are uncomfortable with facing, but ultimately it's just true. And deep down, you kind of know that it is. And this is kind of where the constellation falls apart is that it is that older ship it is it's not just oh the styling is kind of dated compared to the newer ships or oh you know what's with these VTOL thrusters what if you're not in an atmosphere what are the fans supposed to do blah blah you know all these little arguments that you hear about when people complain about the constellation they're not really relevant the problem is is that the const constellation is just outclassed yeah it can carry more cargo if you want a cargo ship, it has a little snub fighter, but I don't know. I mean, it's one thing to say, hey, it's got a snub fighter, but to use it and retrieve it. Sometimes you you might find yourself frequently in situations where you're kind of sitting there twiddling your thumbs when you really can't afford to waiting for that thing to come back and dock with your ship. And when you're going out there and you're trying to be efficient or you're trying to be deadly, you need to be able to do things quickly. It's like, wait, pause, time out, time out. I have to launch my snub fighter. I mean, when you've got the shielding of a Vanguard and the time it takes you to launch your fighter, you're going to be dead. Now, of course, the Constellation probably is going to have a lot heavier armor than, you know, the Corsair. And that's probably... I mean, some people might argue, well, the Constellation's got four engines and the Corsair's only got two, so, you know, the Constellation's going to be faster. Mm. If you really think about it, the Constellation's probably going to be a much heavier ship. It is, in some respects, a bigger ship, though, I mean, the measurements are a little bit off when you look at the website, because I think when they measured the height of the Corsair, they measured it with the wings folded up, so it's like... <laughs> It's almost absurd. Um, I, <laughs> I would say the height, you would look at it realistically with the wings folded down as its height in flight, but, you know, whatever. I think the Corsair is going to be lighter, faster, more maneuverable, and whereas the Constellation is going to be tankier and probably take a lot more armor once armor gets in the game. Um, but... I just don't I just don't see it being so great that it makes such a difference and when I look at something like the constellation and I see the firepower and the def and the defensive potential it's the defensive potential is not so high to justify the lower firepower whereas something like the Corsair even if these two ships did exactly the same speed full tilt 910 meters a second i would still pick the corsair because even though it's probably going to be much more of a glass cannon it really is a it it is it is really is one hell of a cannon and ultimately that's really kind of what it boils down to right with these two ships is you know here i am and i'm taking the aquila out you know the exploration version and i'm blasting i'm blasting I'm blasting the shit. I'm cooking fools. I'm having a good time. But this doesn't make me, you know, look at the upcoming sale and say, well, maybe it's time to look at that Andromeda. Maybe I was wrong. No. All this does is make me wring my hands and go, I can't wait till the Corsair gets here because the Corsair is just going to do this so much better. It, it, it. That's just, a, I think that that's ultimately what bogs down the constellation is it, it's just a relic of an earlier era of Star Citizen when CIG had a lot of fanciful ideas about how things were going to work. And, you know, the constellation is decent. Some people's like, oh, it, no minion, it's the number one PVE ship for now. But I, th I just think that, you know, it, it's fixable. It really is fixable. 
but is CIG gonna do that? I don't know. Last time they had a chance to fix it, they just kind of doubled down on the awfulness and and dialed up the good looks on the ship, and they didn't really, you know, put a lot of effort into it. Now they have fixed the handling, and yeah, they could come back and they could fix this, but. I mean, unless it goes with like a like a fairly hefty upgunning, and we or we see some really massive defensive potential out of armor. Realistically, even though you're kind of seeing me pull some stuff off here, I mean, this it's just an oversized vanguard, and not all that much more firepower when you really, you know, go down on go to Urkel and you start. You know, pulling up different you know builds that you can put on a Vanguard Warden versus on this, the DPS isn't all that much different. So, yeah, is it the worship in Star Citizen? It's un it's just it's so bogged down by the past. There's so many things that just need to change here. And, are they going to, or are they just going to build better ships? Chances are they're just going to build better ships. The Corsair isn't like the last of the medium, you know, ships that are going to be able to do things like this. There are going to be more from many different manufacturers. There's probably going to be one from, <laughs> there's probably going to be a 400i at some point and other manufacturers are going to step into the ring. And I just feel like the Constellation is just going to continue to be neglected and semi-fixed here and there but i just think that there are going to be much better options and, and the, the corsair is just so far ahead of this thing that it's kind of funny that it's the loner because in playing the loner for the corsair it just makes you want to play the corsair all that much more it doesn't make you want to look at the other constellations and say mm, maybe it's like nah it only just secures the Corsair's place in your heart. Thank you for watching. So, uh, if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in Star Citizen Squadron 43 development, please follow, please follow, please follow us on our social media channel.